<laughs> the first question is... Oh, if, but you're going to hear it. Oh, yeah, wait, I'm going to ask surprised. you. I'm going to ask you the question. <laughs> oh, yeah, come on. All right, what's up, guys? I'm joined by Arash and Pavlo. If 2025 was the year of agents, what do you think 2026 is going to be the year of? Uh, I think embodied agents. Like, we're going to see more agents, realistic agents, robotic agents. I work on AI for science. We're going to see more, like, robots doing experiments in the labs and maybe making observations, giving feedback to agents so that maybe they can generate other hypotheses and test them later in the lab. We're definitely going to see uh, increase in efficiencies. There is a Gemmons paradox where, you know, if resource gets more efficient, people start to use it more. The AI models propagate into all, all, like everyday life, basically. So we're going to see agents with bodies that are smarter and more efficient in 2026. Yeah, many of them, yeah. If you guys had unlimited compute, what would you work on? I would probably use it to generate synthetic data for tra from like for scientific applications to mimic the uh, basic physics of the of the, that that domain. Pavla, what about you? First thing I will do is to train as large models I can. I will spend like entire compute and then I will get this model and do the compression. We'll get smaller models. Another exciting direction we started working with Zarash is like diffusion language models, yeah. right? There is no big diffusion LLMs. You know, again, Nvidia is very open. So we can make this for community. Build one giant model that you can compress to work extremely well on any piece of hardware. Pavlo, I'm going to go to you first for this one. What do you think is an underexplored part of the field? So we can make things more efficient, right? By, for example, trimming or reducing precision for them. If you think about it, it, it is not right. It means we are not using some parts of the model. Yeah, my collaborative research is like, if we can compress the model, can we reuse whatever we compress to make the model better? I think I'm going to also think about like, uh, going the same direction, building AI tools for scientific applications. In those domains, we've been having a hard time seeing scaling laws in the like, traditional sense, like big data, big model works well. One reason is because in those domains, we don't have massive data sets. We take small models big on these domains, but at test time, using test time search, rather than you know generating a solution before, in stuff that we start searching for solutions, we get much better high quality solutions. Using small models, but calling them many, many times, we're getting like much better higher quality solution. That's so cool, guys. Thank you so much for your time. Excellent answers. And uh, thank you. Thank you again so much. Thank you.